everybody, Clayton here at eTrailer.com. Here at eTrailer, we install, test, and review a lot of different products to help you as a customer make a more educated decision before your purchase. Today, we're going to be working on a 2017 GMC Canyon. We're going to be taking a look at, and I'll be walking you through how to install, the Roadmaster Direct Connect base plate kit. Our base plate is going to be one of those key components in our flat towing setup. Our base plate is going to be the key connection point between the frame on our truck and our tow bar. Now the tow bar is going to be our next key component, and that's going to be the direct connection between our base plate and our motorhome. We're also going to have our safety cables, and these are going to save us if there ever was a disconnect. That way we can keep attached to our truck. We're also going to have our supplemental braking system, which is going to apply the brakes in our towed vehicle whenever we push the brakes in our motorhome. We also have this breakaway switch. What this is going to do is this is going to apply the brakes if we were to become disconnected. We also are going to have our diode wiring. This gives us all those necessary lighting functions to our towed vehicle. We also have our battery disconnect, which disconnects our battery. That way we're not drawing the power whenever we are flat towing. And we're going to have our stoplight switch, which lets us get a signal to our indicator light. Our base plate bolts up directly to our frame, so it's going to be a really strong connection for our tow bar. Now it is going to be a steel construction, so it's going to be really strong for a long time. We're also going to have a really nice black powder coat finish to help resist rust and corrosion as well. Now one thing I really do like about this kit is there's no drilling, welding, or anything like that. It truly is a bolt-up installation. Our safety chain tabs are going to be right here on the inside. So whenever we're ready to disconnect, you can just grab that safety cable, kind of pull it off of there. And then we can remove our pin from our tow bar. And the only thing you're going to see here is our arm, but this actually comes out as well. We want to pull out on this ring. You can turn it down and then pull it out. And this is what it's going to look like every day. When we remove our arm, you're not going to be able to see the actual base plate. That's one thing I really like about this kit. It looks nice and sharp and it almost looks factory since our base plate is going to replace our factory tow hook. And when we're ready to hook up to our motorhome, we're going to take our arms. We want this tab facing down. We're going to slide that into our base plate and we're going to turn it 90 degrees until you hear it click and lock in. We'll do this on both sides. With our arms in, we can then grab our tow bar. We're just going to lift up on that, slide our arms out to here, and then we can grab our provided pen. We're going to slide that through. You want this hole to line up on that side, and then we can add our pen to secure it. We'll do this on both sides. Once you get that done, you can then grab your safety chain, reach up to your safety chain hook, and put that on there. When we run our safety cables through our channels, we want to make sure to cross them on this back side. We want to cross them because if there ever was a disconnect, those are going to tighten up and help hold all of our components off of the ground and keep a little bit more tension on everything. Now that we have our safety cables hooked up, we can grab our diode wiring. Since our customer is doing a six pole to six pole, we don't have a straight cable to go through the channels. But if you're doing a normal seven to six, you can pick up a straight cable that runs right through these channels to help keep it protected. So we can grab our plug end, we'll lift up on our cover, slide that into position, plug it in, and it's not going anywhere. Now we're ready to do our breakaway cable. We'll grab our carabiner clip. This is just gonna go right under everything, right over to here. We're going to take that carabiner, push it through our safety chain loop, and then hook this back to itself. And when you disconnect, you're going to do all of these same processes in the reverse order. But now, since we're hooked up, we're ready to hit the road. And in terms of installation, getting our base plate installed isn't that bad at all. Like I said, there's no drilling, cutting, welding, or anything like that. Just minor fascia trimming. With that being said, let's head in the shop and I'll walk you through the installation now. To begin our installation, we're going to have nine push pin fasteners to remove here on our front radiator cover. I'm just going to do this with a combination of a flathead screwdriver and a trim panel tool. We're just going to take that screwdriver, work underneath the head of that fastener, carefully pry it up, just like so. So we're going to have five on this flat part here, and then four along the front. Now I just want to lift this radiator cover off. We'll just set it off to the side. We now have three T15 torque screws that we need to remove on the top of each side. So we'll go ahead and get those out. We now have a couple 10 millimeter fasteners we need to remove. 
It's going to be really hard to see, but we're going to come up to this grill portion here. And we're going to actually come up in here, and there's going to be a 10 millimeter fastener located in a plastic flange that's kind of angled. And if you're having trouble getting that bolt out, I suggest grabbing a magnet, just sliding it through that opening and grabbing your bolt. We'll repeat that same process on the passenger side. We now have four 15 millimeter bolts we need to remove off of our splash guard. We have two on the front and then two on the back. You do want to hold the splash guard with your other hand, that way it doesn't fall on you. We just lower that down out of the way. We now need to remove a 10 millimeter fastener securing the bottom of our fascia to our core support. There's going to be one bolt on each side. We're going to have one more 7 millimeter fastener to remove right here on each side. Inside of our wheel aligner, we're going to have seven T15 Torx bits we're going to remove. We're going to have three right here on the outside, three on the bottom, and then one more here at the top of our fender. We're now going to repeat that exact same process over on the passenger side. We now want to grab our wheel well liner. We're going to pull that out of our wheel well a little bit just to give us more room to work. Pull that as far out as we can. Now right here along this body line, we're going to have three 7 millimeter fasteners located on the inside. These are going to be pretty hard to get to, but if you take your time, you should be able to get them no problem. We now want to grab some blue painter's tape. We're just going to run this along this body line. That way when we're pulling our fascia off, we don't accidentally scratch our paint. Now you don't have to do this, but it is highly recommended. Now with an extra set of hands on the other side, we can get our fascia taken off. We're going to start at these corners. We're going to pull up and out on our tabs. With that pulled out, we're going to carefully work our way towards the middle. And when you're doing this, you want to be careful of any wiring you might have in your front fascia to disconnect that. And to remove this wiring, you're going to push down on this tab and then pull out. We're going to have one of these on each side. We can now set our fascia off to the side in a safe spot. We're now going to remove this plastic air dam. We're going to have three pushpin fasteners on the top. We're going to take those off just like we did for our radiator cover. We can then take our trim panel tool, come back behind here, and pry out on this clip. We can just set this off to the side. We now we'll remove our bumper beam. There's going to be two 15 millimeter bolts on each side. With those removed, we can lift our bumper beam out of, way, out of the way and set it off to the side. And now to pull off this foam covering, we can grab an 18 millimeter socket and just loosen up our tow hook. With the nuts off the back side, we can then hold our tow hook, slide our bolts out, and remove the tow hook. The tow hooks will not be reinstalled. We will be adding red Loctite to all of our new hardware, and you can find red Loctite here at eTrailer. Now we want to grab our base plate and our hardware. Our forwardmost bolt is going to have a flat washer on the outside of the frame rail. We just want to hold that in place. You can grab our hardware, slide that through. On the back side, we're going to be adding our big flat washer, a split lock washer, and our hex nut. For our rear hole, we're just going to take our bolt slide it through and on the inside we're going to add that same flat washer, split lock washer, and hex nut. We then want to hold our base plate up to where our upper holes line up for our bumper beam. We're going to grab a 19 millimeter socket, put a wrench on the back side, and just snug it down. We're now going to repeat the same process over on the passenger side. 
Now I just want to come back and torque it down to the amount specified in our instructions. We are going to be reinstalling our factory bumper beam using the same hardware, but before we do that, we just need to add some red Loctite to our hardware. We can come back and torque these down as well, and again, those torque specs will be found in our instructions. We now need to remove the foam insert in the front of our front fascia. We're just going to grab a small flat blade screwdriver and pry out on these tabs. This will not be reinstalled. I went ahead and reinstalled our air dam, but as far as getting our base plate installed, we're totally done there. But since our fascia is off, now is going to be a great time to install any other flat tailing components that we do have. And we are going to have to do a little bit of trimming. So once I get all those components on, we'll catch up with you later. So we did actually have to trim a little bit of our front fascia to get our base plate to fit. There's a little housing around where our tow hook was. You just kind of have to trim around the outside of that to get your base plate to fit nicely. And you can just follow the lines along the edge to get that trimmed out. And a sharp utility knife will do the trick. That's going to do it for our look at and our installation of Roadmaster's Direct Connect Base Plate Kit for our 2017 GMC Canyon.